So my name is Jonathan Dory. I'm a PhD candidate at the McGill School of Information Studies. I'm greatly thankful to be here. So thank you for everyone who's invited me. I would also like to, uh, on a brief note, thank our, my colleagues, because I'm also a translator, my colleague interpreters who work in the shadows, just like archivists work in the shadows, uh, and who are helping to make this thing uh, bilingual in French and English. Um, Today I'm going to be talking about the role of uh, archives in the digital age, and I'm more concerned about the opportunity for us to look at one thing, and specifically users. Now, you're not seeing this, but this is the actual shirt that I'm wearing under this shirt. Um, and I do fight for the user. This is the topic of my dissertation. I'm looking at specifically undergraduates who use or would use uh, digital archives if uh, we actually provided tools for them that they could understand, if we understood their um, needs, and if we actually could go beyond what we have been doing all these years. Um, in pre preparing my presentation, I came across this uh, quote um, in the proposal for this session uh, that a digital population can all be well served by analog government. And this led me to believe, and I'm going to be paraphrasing this, that a digital population cannot be well served by analog archives either. Um, we are moving in the digital world, as was said previously, most people uh, feel that libraries should be in their computers, that archives should be in their computers, that you get home uh, with that. Uh, one of the things that we can do as archivists is look and go back to our practices and our theory. And we all know what this is, appraisal, arrangement, description, um, conservation, and access. But how does that shift in the digital world? What should we be doing differently? I mean, we've always been saying that we do this regardless of format. Well, now we have a different format, and we should still be looking at these basic principles uh, and practices. In terms of theory, we also have three that I took out, provenance, context, and respect de fond, uh, which are three, I would say, fundamental uh, principles, theoretical principles of archival studies. And I think these still uh, hold true in the digital world. Um, the idea of provenance, that you uh, describe things based on who created them, still holds true. The idea of respect de fond, not mixing the records of various people, the various contexts of creation, context of curation, uh, the custodial history, and so on. But one thing that we are not is we are not paper conservators. We need to go beyond this ability of only being able to preserve paper. We need to look at audiovisual material. We need to look at tapes. We need to look at um, electronic records. We need to look at files. We need to look at data. And this is what we've been doing. We're getting better at it, and we will be getting better at it. Uh, most people, most users, when they think about archives, they feel probably like a first-time archivist walking into an archives, which is you feel a complete and total sense of loss. You walk into this archives, uh, you don't really know what things are because you don't really understand how things are described and how things are arranged. Uh, but in the future, we will also be seeing ourselves as this, that we are still lost in the archives, but instead of being surrounded by empty boxes or box full of records, we're going to be surrounded by server space. Uh, but this is also what we do as archivists. We're also in the process of converting our old analog records to uh, digital records. There have been talks about digitization, about records management. I would also like to emphasize the talks about digital preservation, digital libraries. Those are you can see them as competitors to us. You can see them as collaborators with us. And then there's this other set of um, area, which I would like to call the not so holy trinity, that is digital curation, data curation, data stewardship. Um, I have not yet seen a definition that I was pleased with, that I really understand what, this, what these people are doing that we're not doing. I don't really know where to position myself in relation with these people because I feel that they're doing what we're doing and they're doing what we should be doing as well. Uh, so th this, th there's a bit of a tension there. Uh, I believe Laurel mentioned digital humanities. That's also an area that is gaining quite a lot of prevalence. And then there's the whole big elephant in the room. Um, this whole thing that we've been talking about very uh, quite 
very much recently, and that is big data. The elephant in the room, if you, I mean, I haven't seen this movie, but um, Big Mama's House. Now, if you look at big data, to me, it really is the flavor of the month. Uh, it is what um, we're all talking about, big data, data warehousing, the, uh, digital architecture, and so on, information architecture. Fundamentally, I think when I look at this, it really comes down to proper records management, proper record keeping, and I think we have a role as archivists to be part of that, not to let IT come in and take our role or let librarians come in and take our role either. We need to work with them. We also need to look at three things. One is the users. What do the users need? What do they want? What can we give them to serve their need? If we have a broader user base, we have a broader advocate base for us. Uh, that has been said before. Uh, we need to be able to design things for them. Finding aids were designed by and for archivists, not for the users. Users don't really understand them. What can we do to change this uh, going forward? We also have to think about remote access, specifically access, but also remote access. And by which I mean access in a very simple way. Can we think about subject headings for archival description? Can we? Um, can we think about distance access? Can we think about recreating electronic reading rooms? So instead of having people come into our physical reading room, creating a space online where they log on, it is a protected space which would fall under the same requirements for privacy and confidentiality that we have in reading rooms, where we can control a little bit more. Playing with the sense of technology, uh, maybe creating this through the use of VPN, maybe looking at crowdsourcing uh, features as well when we want to describe individual items. The look, uh, looking at social media, looking at mobile uh, technologies. Most people now don't even use a computer. Maybe not most people, but in certain countries in the world, most people don't use computers, they use their mobile. Can we give access to our records on mobile technology? And in summary, what I really want to emphasize is that we have as a profession, a set of practices, we have a set of theories uh, that build who we are, but we also need to be looking at these three things that I mentioned, users, access, technology, and I think when we put all of that together, what will happen in the future is that we will not be outsourcing our expertise to other fields, because when we do that, then we will no longer have a profession. And on that, I would like to thank you, and if you have any questions, I will be around. Thank you.